Uh, thanks so much uh, for your time this evening. Now, this may not be the way Lula da Silva would have wanted to start his presidency, but does it also provide him the opportunity now to safeguard democracy as well as democratic institutions in Brazil? Well, yes. I mean, he was <clears throat> he was elected in a free and fair election. Um, the attempt to uh, create uh, violence is certainly not within the scope of, of legitimate political behavior. Uh, the President, uh, the president of Brazil before him, uh, really was involved in, in uh, stirring up, uh, stirring up the masses. There's, a, there is a kind of uh, strange similarity between that and what happened in the United States when many people didn't accept the results of the election. But I think there's a positive element to this, which is, it shows that uh, that the, that people support democracy and support a free and fair fair election and do not heed, at least most of them, heed the words of a, what I would have to call a dictatorial personality. Well, do you think Jair Bolsonaro, in the aftermath of all of this, has done enough to condemn the riots? It was only six hours after it all happened that he even issued a statement on Twitter. Do you think his supporters, the majority of whom, in fairness, are not as extreme as the groups that we saw on Saturday, do you think the rest of his supporters in Brazil will be happy with how he's handled this? Well, I, you know, I do think so. I mean, I've known Brazil for over a long period of time. I was ambassador there, and, and I remember the very first time I served there, there was some, during the military regime, and there were some demonstrations that were, uh, had some violence connected with them. So I think the, the, um, the idea that um, most Brazilians support the democracy, support the validity of the election is a very good sign for de Brazil's democracy. Um, and um, and I think Bolsonaro's image has really suffered from this, which I think is a good thing now because of his own personality and and uh, I would say a certain degree of quirkiness in the way he the way he ruled. Well, his image may have suffered because of this, but uh, just after those election results actually came out in October, it was clear that Brazil was and probably still is uh, quite a polarized society. And Lula da Silva coming into power has got a lot on his plate. It's not just the economy that he's now got to look at, but he's also got to find ways uh, to, to bridge the divisions uh, in this country where there are still millions of people who support Bolsonaro and what he stands for. Yeah, well, it's unclear in terms of what Bolsonaro's su support would be within within Brazil's um, uh, within the uh, um, within the legislature. Um, but I think I think Lula will have to be very careful in terms of how he treats the opposition. Uh, reach out the hand, uh, his hand. He's pretty good at that, uh, you know. And I th I think he he's had experience as. Uh, in Brazil and as Brazil's president, uh, I, I'm very hopeful that um, that things will calm down and that he will, uh, with some good political manipulation and and as I say, reaching out his hand to the opposition, will be able to rule in an effective way. Melvin Levitsky, appreciate your analysis. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Well, you're welcome. It's always good to talk with you.